My name is Sarah Bonyes, residing at 123 Oak Street. As I sit here, ready to embark on this interview journey, I want to share a glimpse of who I am beyond what's written on my resume. I'm not just a candidate seeking a job. I'm a single mother striving to provide a better life for my two incredible children. In terms of my professional journey, I've traversed diverse paths that have enriched my skills and perspectives. From managing a small local business to working as a customer service representative at a bustling corporation, each role has been a stepping stone, refining my abilities in communication, problem solving, and adaptability. Being a single mom has instilled in me an unparalleled sense of determination and resilience. Balancing the demands of work and parenthood, I've honed my time management skills and learned to navigate challenges with a calm and focused demeanor. My children are my driving force, motivating me to not just excel in my career, but to also set an example of perseverance and dedication. My credentials speak volumes about my commitment to growth and learning. A bachelor's degree in business administration coupled with various certifications in leadership and management signify my dedication to continuous improvement. Moreover, my passion for learning extends beyond formal education. I thrive in environments that foster growth and innovation. I believe my experiences, both personal and professional, equip me with a unique perspective and a set of skills that would be valuable to this esteemed organization. I am confident that my blend of practical expertise, coupled with my innate ability to connect with people and my unwavering dedication, positions me as a strong candidate for this role. My desire to contribute, to grow, and to make a meaningful impact within a team is palpable. I am not just seeking a job. I'm seeking an opportunity to be part of a dynamic team where I can thrive and contribute positively while continuing to grow both personally and professionally. Thank you for considering my application. I am excited about the prospect of potentially joining your team and bringing my skills, dedication, and enthusiasm to contribute to the success of this company. A day in the life of a delivery driver. My alarm blares at 5.30 a.m., dragging me out of a dreamless slumber. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I stumble out of bed and into the kitchen. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee envelops the room as I shuffle towards the machine, my trusted companion on these early mornings. By 6 a.m., I'm savoring the first sip of that strong brew while flipping through the day's route on my tablet. Breakfast consists of a hearty armlet packed with whatever leftovers I can find in the fridge, today it's peppers, onions, and a sprinkle of cheese. I gobble it down, knowing I'll need the energy for the long day ahead. Around 7 a.m., I'm out the door, my keys jingling in hand. The truck beckons, a metallic beast waiting to hit the road. Loading up the cargo, securing everything in place, checking the engine, it's all part of the ritual that gets me ready for the day. By 8 a.m., I'm on the highway, joining the stream of vehicles on their morning journey. The sun is up, painting the sky in hues of pink and orange. It's a peaceful time, the world just waking up. Throughout the day, I'm navigating highways and byways, making pit stops at various depots and warehouses. The radio is my companion, filling the cabin with music and occasional updates about the weather or traffic. Lunch is often a quick affair, usually a sandwich or a salad grabbed on the go. Sometimes, 
If I'm lucky, I'll find a cozy diner where I can sit down for a proper meal and a momentary break from the road. As the afternoon wears on, fatigue starts to tug at my eyelids. But a cup of strong coffee and the thought of reaching home keep me going. By 5 p.m., I'm wrapping up my deliveries for the day. The setting sun signals the end of the work shift. I take a moment to stretch my legs, breathing in the fresh air before hitting the road back home. The return journey is often a mix of relief and anticipation. The familiar sights along the way remind me that I'm almost there, nearing the comfort of my own space. By 7 p.m., I'm pulling into my driveway. The day's work is behind me, and the scent of home welcomes me as I step through the door. Dinner is a simple affair tonight, leftovers warmed up with a side of steamed vegetables. The evening is mine to unwind. Sometimes I'll catch up on reading or watch a show, but mostly. I relish the quiet, the peace that comes with being in my own haven. And as the clock strikes 10 p.m., I prepare for bed, ready to do it all over again tomorrow. A day in the life of Emily, the college student. My day begins with a rude awakening from my blaring alarm at 7 a.m. It's a battle to pry myself from the warmth of my blankets, but a quick splash of cold water wakes me up enough to get going. Coffee is a necessity, so a pit stop at the campus cafe is a must. By 8 a.m., I'm rushing into my first class, Biology 101. Dr. Stevens, our passionate professor, dives into the complexities of cellular biology, making the early morning lecture surprisingly engaging. I scribble notes feverishly, determined not to miss a single detail. Between classes, I catch up with my friends at the quad. There's Sarah, always with a joke to lighten the mood, and Alex, the intellectual with an insatiable curiosity. Our banter is a mix of laughter and last-minute studying before the next lecture. At 11 a.m., it's psychology with Professor Ramirez. Her lectures are like a mind puzzle, challenging and thought-provoking. The class discussions are dynamic, fueled by diverse opinions that keep us engaged till the bell rings. Lunch is a rushed affair at the campus cafeteria, a sandwich grabbed between classes. I wish I had more time to savor the meal, but the day rushes on. By 2 p.m., it's time for my favorite class, Creative Writing Workshop. Professor Green, with her wild curly hair and contagious enthusiasm, leads the session. The room buzzes with creativity as we share our latest pieces and critique each other's work. It's both invigorating and draining, pouring emotions onto the page. After classes, there's a quick study session at the library with my friends. The struggle to concentrate after a full day of lectures is real, but their support keeps me going. By 6 p.m., it's finally time to head back home. The exhaustion hits, but there's a sense of accomplishment in navigating through the day's academic challenges. Dinner is a makeshift affair, leftovers, or whatever I can whip up quickly. The evening is a mix of relaxation and catching up on assignments. Sometimes, a spontaneous night out with friends breaks the routine, a much-needed reprieve from the academic grind. As the clock ticks closer to midnight, I wrap up the day, reluctantly setting the alarm for the next morning. The day might have been exhausting, 
but it's the kind of exhaustion that comes from diving into passions and pursuits. A day in the life of Adam, the apprentice engineer. The morning sun streams through my window at 6 a.m., nudging me awake for another day at the engineering firm. I dress in my best suit, determined to make a lasting impression on my boss and colleagues. By 7.30 a.m., I'm at the office, eager to dive into the day's tasks. My mentor, Mr. Thompson, greets me with a warm smile and hands me a project to tackle. His guidance is invaluable, and I soak up every piece of advice he offers. As I immerse myself in calculations and blueprints, the camaraderie among some colleagues is palpable. However, there's an undercurrent of tension with a few who seem unwilling to accept me. Their dismissive glances and muttered remarks sting, creating an unwelcome cloud over my enthusiasm. At 11 a.m., during a team meeting, the subtle discrimination turns overt. One colleague, John, unleashes a barrage of insults, questioning my competence and ridiculing my ideas. His words cut deep, but I swallow my pride, determined not to give him the satisfaction of seeing me falter. The rest of the day becomes a battlefield of perseverance. I focus on my work, ignoring the toxic atmosphere that lingers around certain individuals. Despite the verbal bullying, I push through, seeking solace in the complexities of engineering problems. Lunchtime is solitary. I retreat to a corner, my mind swirling with a mixture of frustration and determination. I remind myself of my passion for engineering, using it as a shield against the hurtful words flung my way. By 5 p.m., exhaustion settles in, both from the workload and the emotional toll of the day. I tidy up my desk, ready to leave behind the hostilities and seek solace at home. The journey back is a blend of disappointment and a resolve to prove my worth. I can't control the prejudices of others, but I can control my response and dedication to my craft. Evening brings a semblance of peace. I review my notes, sketch out ideas for tomorrow's tasks, and find solace in the quiet pursuit of knowledge. The passion for engineering burns bright within me, undeterred by the hurdles I face. A thrilling day in the life of Frank, the firefighter. The alarm clock blares at 5.30 a.m., jolting me awake. I'm Frank, a fireman in the heart of the city. I grubbily reach out to silence the alarm, rubbing the sleep from my eyes. The morning light filters through the blinds, casting a warm glow on the room. I stretch, feeling the familiar aches and pains of a physically demanding job. After a quick shower, I head to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. The smell of freshly brewed coffee fills the air, a comforting aroma that signals the start of a new day. I scramble some eggs, toast a couple of slices of bread, and pour myself a cup of coffee. As I eat, I glance at the clock. It's 6.15 a.m. Time to get ready for work. I pull on my uniform, the heavy fabric familiar and comforting. I check my gear, making sure everything is in order. My helmet, my axe, my fireproof jacket and pants, my boots. Everything is ready. I take a deep breath, steeling myself for the day ahead. It's 7 a.m. Time to head to the fire station. The fire station is a flurry of activity. My fellow firefighters are checking their gear, discussing the day's schedule and catching up on the latest news. I join them, feeling a sense of camaraderie and belonging. We are not just colleagues, we are a family. We have each other's backs, no matter what. The day is filled with drills and training exercises. We practice climbing ladders, breaking down doors and rescuing people from burning buildings. It's hard work, but it's rewarding. Every drill, every exercise is a step towards saving lives. It's 12 p.m. Time for lunch. 
After lunch, at 1.45 p.m., the alarm at the station blares, cutting through the laughter and camaraderie. The room falls silent, all eyes on the dispatcher. Fire, she announces, her voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. We spring into action, pulling on our gear and rushing to the fire trucks. The sirens wail as we speed through the city streets, the urgency of the situation weighing heavily on us. As we approach the scene, a plume of thick, black smoke fills the sky. The house is a raging inferno, flames licking at the windows and roof. My heart pounds in my chest as we pull up, the heat of the fire washing over us. We jump out of the truck, pulling out the hoses and preparing to battle the blaze. We work as a team, each of us knowing our role. Some of us attack the fire, dousing it with water and foam. Others search the house, looking for any occupants. The heat is intense, the smoke thick and choking. But we push through, driven by the knowledge that lives are at stake. Suddenly, a cry comes from inside the house. We've got a child, one of my colleagues shouts, emerging from the smoke with a small figure in his arms. Relief washes over me, quickly replaced by renewed determination. We have to get this fire under control. The battle rages on, the fire stubbornly resisting our efforts. But we are relentless, refusing to back down. Slowly but surely, the flames begin to die down, the smoke thinning. After what feels like an eternity, the fire is finally out. We are exhausted, covered in soot and sweat, but we are victorious. As we pack up our gear, I can't help but feel a sense of pride. We've saved a life today, prevented a tragedy. It's a stark reminder of why I do what I do, of why I chose to become a fireman. Despite the danger, the fear, the uncertainty, it's moments like these that make it all worth it. I return home, exhausted but satisfied. I kick off my boots, peel off my uniform and head to the shower. The hot water is soothing, washing away the grime and sweat of the day. I emerge feeling refreshed, ready to relax. It's 6.30 p.m. Time for dinner. After dinner, I decide to take a stroll around the neighborhood. The city is alive with the hum of traffic and the chatter of people returning home from work. The setting sun paints the sky in hues of orange and pink, a beautiful end to a long day. I walk past the park, the playground filled with the laughter of children. I can't help but smile, reminded of the reason why I do what I do, to keep these streets safe, to ensure that these children can play without fear. By 8.30 p.m., I'm back home. I settle down on the couch with a book, losing myself in the pages. The characters and their adventures provide an escape, a chance to live a different life, if only for a little while. The clock ticks away, the hours slipping by unnoticed. At 10 p.m., I decide to call it a night. I brush my teeth, wash my face, and change into my pajamas. I climb into bed, the sheets cool and comforting. I close my eyes, the events of the day replaying in my mind. The drills, the respond to emergency calls, combating fires with the goal of protecting lives and property. Each one a reminder of the importance of my job, of the lives I'm responsible for. As I drift off to sleep, I can't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. It's been a long day, filled with challenges and triumphs. But I wouldn't have it any other way. This is my life, the life of Frank, a fireman. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Thank you. If you found this content educational and enjoyable, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos, stories, and narratives.